Okay, so I was asked to uh, talk about some basics of Asset Editor. So that's what this video is going to be about, is just some basics on editing uh, models. There's more that it can do, and I'll talk about those briefly, but I'm not going to go into them too much, maybe in a future video, next time I mess with them. But first off, when you've downloaded Asset Editor, what you need to do is you need to go to Options and Settings, and you need to find your data folder for each of these games. So for me, I have Warhammer 2 and 3 installed, but you can put um, all of these games into it. Uh, if you notice, it doesn't have um, the Thrones of Bretonia in here, it looks like. Um, I don't think that the person who makes this actually owns that game. I know that they said that they didn't own Attila even. Uh, they actually added this for me, if I remember right. Um, at least he added it after I asked about it. So anyway, uh, we have these things. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when we choose our current game, that's just what loads up. You can always load all game files from other games. And I have done that where I have imported Troy models and Attila models into Warhammer 2. Um, the one thing to be aware of is if you do that, Asset Editor is perfectly capable of doing it, but you need to get permission from CA and Games Workshop to do that. Uh, Games Workshop is very protective of their IP, obviously, and they will definitely ban you if you do stuff that you're not supposed to. So just be aware of that. Get permission first. It's the safe way to do it. So once we have these, what we can do is, as mentioned, I can also load like Warhammer 2 if I want. It takes a little bit to do it, but I could load in the packs from Warhammer 2 if I want. We also need to create a new pack file. Once it's created, we can see this. So mine, like Warhammer 3 one, is here. If I go to my Warhammer 2 mods, this is my other one. Now, the reason I'm pulling this up is just because I have more models here. So we have them linked by skeletons. If we go to variant meshes, variant models, you will see those things. Now, in general, your humans are going to be HU1, human males. That being said, the women in Kislev are also human males. Um, <clears throat> and so are the patriarchs and such. The most of the uh, women in the game are either elf women or Bretonian women. And they're actually in HU1B right here. Uh, Rapance is a, is the, was the only woman in Warhammer 2 that had uh, an HU1 skeleton. You also have HU1C, which is all the big guys, the Chaos, Norska, and Kislev folk. You have HU1D, which is the male elves. And you have HU3, which is the dwarf. So those are all the big ones for me, because those are what I like to work with. But let's say you want to mess with Grom the Paunch, and you don't know where he is. You just search for him. Now, there's also Grom Brindal, but you have Grom the Paunch. Now, this actually bring up an important aspect. And that is some models, don't ask me why it's inconsistent, but some models describe head and body as separate entities. Some describe like head, body, legs, um, and some just all in one. So if I open Grom body here, and I always open rigid models, not the WS models. You can create WS models, but I've never seen any reason to do that in here. But like um, you can, let's see, uh, generate WS model right here in tools. I've never used it, but just be aware. So we have his body. But let's say we want to work with him as a whole. We're going to have to hit this folder and import. And we're going to import it from Warhammer 3, because we are working in Warhammer 3, even though I have the Warhammer 2 mod open. And um, let's say Grom. So variant meshes, uh, Grom and we're gonna do the head rigid model. Okay, so now that's in, but it's right now just a reference model. That's useful if you wanna like get an idea of what scale things should be or whatever. You can have it as a reference model, but let's say we wanna make it editable. We right click on either it or the overarching folder and we have it in the game now or in this thing now. 
<clears throat> if I hide this, you'll notice a few things. First of all, in his animation, it's based on him, which is this big one. And then right here, the little one, that's his little hype man. And you'll see that in the um, re-rigging in just a second when I deal with that. But let's uh, get to it when we go to it. We're going to go from left to right. So first of all, this is save. You need to have a pack open that you created so that you can save it. It will save it in here. So let's say I save this thing. Notice it goes into the red. And then you right click and you save. And that will save it into the pack permanently. I'm not going to do that just because I don't need this model in mind. It's already full of stuff. OK, so let's say we want to import another model that we want to put in here. Let's say Grombrindal, just to make the, um, just to really bring out the grudges, I suppose. So again, variant mesh. I guess I could. you can also like, if you type a little bit more, it will open them. So here, Grombrindal. So if I import him, I can see how he is broken down. He's broken down into head, two heads, one leg, two torsos, three cape things. And they all control different aspects of him. So let's say we just want to mess with the, well, actually, yeah, let's just mess with the head. So I'm going to make editable and make editable by right clicking. So that's our head. Now I can hide the reference models and I'm going to actually hide everything except for him for the time being. Okay, so here's his head. Now let's talk about the controls of the camera. If you hold down Alt and left click and drag, you move, you rotate the camera. If you zoom out or in, you need to hold down Alt and run the mouse wheel. If you want to move the camera left and right, you're gonna hold down right click and move back and forth while holding down Alt. Okay, so we are there. Now, if we wanna see something where the animation isn't working, because basically the animation is set by the skeleton and if it's not re-rigged using this tool, you're gonna have issues. So let's first show you what that looks like. Okay. So that's the little skeleton of his hype man. That's Grom, Brindal, or, um, Grom the Paunch himself. And notice this is what it looks like when you don't have the animation set correctly. It looks bad. So there's a few things to it. One, the location. So going from left to right, we have the move. Move gizmo allows us to move it up. Now I'm going to try and move it more in line with the head here. So, or I could move it more in line with his hype man if I wanted to make his hype man a dwarf. Wouldn't that just be terrible, okay? So let's say we do that. Now, moving it is still not enough. We have to re-rig it, but we'll talk more about that when we get to it. Let's now talk about rotation. The next one, we can rotate. The arrow tells us which way uh, positive and negatives rotate it. So positive would rotate it clockwise here, and negatives would do it. So you can do this by typing it in, like 45, if you want to rotate by 45 degrees. You can do the same with translating, so moving. Just be aware that like a 1 moves quite a bit. So you're usually doing small increments. Then we also have the scale gizmo. So if we want to scale him up or down, we can do that. So let's say we want to scale them down by about 80%. I would point 8, point 8, point 8. Now, I usually don't, I don't bother with changing that to a zero. So he's scaled down a bit, and I'm going to move him more in line with that little hype man. OK. Now what we have is how we can select the object. So first of all, this is the normal view, but there's times where maybe I want to put a helmet on this guy, but his hair would just clip through it. So what I do is hit F2 or do the face mode here. And um, well, I'm going to have to do it with a single piece. So that's another thing. Let's say if you see this is his hair and we have his hair here and his actual face here with some of his hair. If we hit view only selected, we'll see that and we can unselect it to go back to where we were. So he's a pretty ugly guy without his hair, but let's say we wanted to get rid of it. We could just do this. You can also <clears throat> split it into logical parts and pick parts. So maybe, well, that would be too much. So I don't want that, but notice, hey, we can see his mouth and stuff and everything. But depending on what you need to work with, you're able to do that. Also, Control-Z goes backwards. 
Okay, but let's say we want to just delete some parts. We can select it and do that, delete. Um, we can select individuals. We can also hold down shift to add more and we hold down control to get rid of some. And the control Z also controls like selections. So just be aware of that. Okay, so we could do that if we want, but that's good enough. <clears throat> now, the other thing that we wanna do is we can also use the vertex mode. I sometimes use this when I'm dealing with, um, with like necklaces. That's where I've used it the most. So trying to get the necklace around a character model in a way that the necklace would lie, I use the vertex, which is F3. And so this is a good way to kind of manipulate where it's pointing, like small parts. So let's say I want to have the tips of his um, mustache pulled out a little bit. First of all, we can select as many as we want by holding down shift and we can move them left and right. We can move it up and down. So let's say we wanted to make it bigger mustache. Well, there we go, bigger mustache. And you can get pretty believable looking stuff if you spend the time messing with multiple vertexes. So just do a little bit at a time. Um, you can really get some pretty interesting things going. And like I said, I usually use it for um, like the uh, like necklaces and stuff. But anyway, so that's that one. We also have our, as mentioned, split mesh into logical parts, which I already showed you, but just to show you again, it splits it up into multiple parts. If you delete some parts and then want to recombine it, you just select the overarching like folder and you hit combine. So they recombine. Um, you can duplicate as well, delete, you can just hit delete. I don't use these tools very often, or not at all, I guess I don't use these. I haven't used these. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what they do yet. Haven't had to use them for it. Now, auto generate uh, level of detail is something you do after you've dealt with your model, you do that. And you generally wanna do it for like everything. So here, we, if we look at our level of detail, you can see, the lower quality as it moves out. And if we select it, we can see the detail level and how far out the camera is. In Warhammer 3, the camera distance for the first LOD is like 20 instead of 80 like it used to be. So I've been having to extend them out when I'm working in Warhammer 3. Okay, so let's go back to LOD 0. Now, the big useful thing for this, other than editing, obviously, visual aspects, is to then re-rig it. So let's talk about that now. So first of all, if I want to re-rig multiple parts at a time, let's say, in this case, since they're both the dwarf head, I'm going to do them both together, then I am going to select them by clicking on one, holding down shift, and selecting the next one. And I'm going to open re-rigging tool. Now there are other modeling and there's like open BMI and skeleton modeling that can be useful for certain things, I believe, but I've never used them. I've never had to use them. They just aren't for me. So open the re-rigging tool. Now in general, we would auto map based on name, but this first of all, will map it to the main guy. So the first bit is the, his little goblin hype man. And the next part is him. So rather than doing that, we can cancel. And I wanna, as you see, we're trying to map it to his hype man. So if we wanted to just map it, map it to Grom Brindals, or excuse me, Grom the Paunches, then auto map would do it to Groms correctly. But we need to do it to this. So basically we kind of like go, oh, all right, so aim root, and then we choose a root, and we can start going to spines. So um we would want to say like, okay, that's goblin spine zero, goblin spine one, goblin spine two. That's maybe the best we can get. We have clav left, so clav left, clav right is right here, goblin clav right. We have neck, so goblin neck, goblin head. Um, ears, eyebrows, eyelid left, eyelid right. Now the jaw, oh, we're gonna use goblin jaw, but the beard, well, what do we do for that? There's no beards on the goblin. Well, we're just going to choose something that's close. So in this case, it's jaw. 
And because I chose a previous shot, John, the previous one, it won't let me select it until I select something different and then move to it. I think that's just to make sure that you mean to do the same thing. So I had to go through and do all of them individually. And I'm not actually 100% sure whether or not the aim route that I chose is necessarily the right aim route, but I think it is. So we can hit OK once we've done that, and we can see how it works out. Well, so far, so good. And it looks like Grom Brindal is the hype man for Grom the Paunch now, at least his head is. So I could have done the same thing with his body as well and turned Grom Brindal into Grom the Paunch's hype man, which is going to get me all kind of, you know, written up in the book of grudges. But anyway, so that's re-rigged. Now, one other thing that you should note is that, and the reason why I actually pulled up woman head here, is that if we're thinking about, um, I need to change my game to Warhammer th uh, 2 in order to see this, but let's go to settings really quick and do that. Um, is sometimes you can find models that aren't necessarily character models and that's okay. So in this case, let's see if I can pull it up without having to, no, I'm gonna have to exit out and reopen it. So I just want to show you, do you wanna quit? Yes, without saving. Asset editor. So if we pull this back up, if we wanna load in a different game, we're gonna pull this up. So it's now in Warhammer 2, I'm gonna open um, my woman head pack. This is where I've done all my things. So if we look at HU1, and this was Empire, and this was Volkmar. So this is an unreleased mod, but um, something I was working on was a, a woman one. But if you notice, like this model here that I have actually comes from the Luminarch Temple Canon. It's a part of the canon. It's only a very, very small part, but this portion right here, I pulled from a like war engine model. So the sky's the limit essentially with what models you're using, just do what works. Sometimes you can find some interesting stuff in that. Um, and so we have that, but one thing to be aware of is, and this is why I brought it up as well, is that sometimes things have no animation that fit to it. So what we need to do instead is we need to pin things to it. So what we do is the pin tool has been changed recently and or at least somewhat recently. So it's a little more complex than it used to be. But if we wanna pin something to another part, we would hit pin and we choose the, the mesh that we want to pin. So this thing, oh, and we're gonna do skin wrap. I'm not 100% sure how to use this tool yet. This was what was got added as new. And then we choose like, let's say her body here to apply it to. And then this will then pin the animation to the nearest body part basically. And sometimes you might need to move it around to get it to pin the way you want, but it will then pin to that animation so it doesn't have to have its own little animation. It's just moving along for the ride. So I usually use that with like um, swords and stuff that or pouches that I wanna add to it. So that's the last tool there. So once you're done with it, again, you just hit save and then you need to right click and save this and you're good to go. You can then open your pack in Rusted Pack File Manager and import whatever files you messed with. So that is the basics of Asset Editor. There's a few other things to be aware of that you have in the tools. You can change, like create mount animation editor. That's really useful. Like in my Henry Le Massif model, he was changed to a HU1C body type, so a chaos model, and he no longer could ride his hippogriff because there's no animation for that. So I had to create a mount animation for that. There's a little bit to it. It's not too complex, but it took a little bit. There's also campaign animation converter. converter. Those of you with experience with mods know that there are very few animations on the campaign map and they are separate from battle map campaigns. So if you create a model that doesn't share an animation with or doesn't look anything like campaign models that already exist in the game, then you're probably going to have to make a campaign animation as well. So those are the big, the two that I also use on rare occasions, but they're pretty darn useful when you need them. So that's everything that I use on a regular basis on Asset Editor. 
and I hope that kind of cleared up some things. Thanks for watching.